the procedure for configuring a realized component is a bit different. As we will see, in some ways it is simpler and in other ways more complex than using an external entity. You will see as we go into detail that the simplification outweighs the extra complexity and yields a more scalable solution. Instead of a fixed path, Verifier expects the Java package name structure to match the one declared in the Bridgepoint model. Each interface the component uses must be declared in Java using the same package rules. That is, the interface declarations must be found along the same package name path as the interface definitions are found in Bridgepoint. Because Java interfaces are unidirectional, every XTUML interface needs two Java interface definitions, one for messages to the provider and one for messages from the provider. Note that if the XTUML interface happens to be unidirectional, Verify will still expect an empty complementary Java interface definition. What happens next depends on whether the component to be realized is participating as a provider or requirer for a given XTUML interface. If it is a provider, then the implementing Java class must specify an implements clause, specifying the name of the to provider form of the Java interface. The implements clause forces the realized component to provide methods for the incoming messages. The constructor argument is cached in the constructor in a variable named for the port exposing the interface. Calls made on this cached port cause the relevant messages to be sent back into the verifier runtime. If the realized component is participating as a requirer, then the interfaces are used in the opposite way. That is, the implements clause declares the from provider version of the interface and the constructor argument takes the to provider type. 